If you start a fight against well-trained sword-wielding samurai while unarmed, you will end up literally unarmed. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Let's go over the basics. Karate is from Japan and is considered part of the Budo family. This means it is an official Japanese martial art, just like Judo, Jujutsu, Aikido, but also Kyudo, Kendo and Yaido. There's actually quite a few Japanese martial arts that are part of the Budo family. Enough to make a whole lot of videos, so there is more to come. Karate, or Karate Do, can be literally translated as the way of the empty hand. It wasn't always called this actually, before it came to Japan from Okinawa in the early 20th century, it was known under a few different names, most notably Todi, which meant Chinese hand. The masters that wanted karate to become popular in Japan and later the world had to change the name and meaning of this martial art, and so they decided to call it Karate instead. Empty hand sounds like some kind of mystical Buddhistic art, which worked really well for the Japanese. As karate needed to grow in Japan, choices were made to link it to the militaristic priorities of Japan pre-World War II. In doing so, a lot of the quintessential qualities of Okinawan karate, like grappling, wrestling and general self-defense, had to make way for the conformist, perfectionistic and athletic. In short, the ballistic made way for the balletic. By the way, if you find this info useful and want others to easily find it, punching the like button would be perfect. When karate came to Japan, this was because of the fact that all of the Okinawan aristocracy had been abolished and this rendered the old karate masters unemployed, forcing them to move to Japan to seek their fortune. Some of the more well-known karate masters to do this were Ito Suanko, uh, Funakoshi Gichin, Motobu Choki, and later Mabuni Kenwa and Miyagi Chojun. I have made several videos about these legendary karate pioneers already, so go ahead and binge them right after this video has ended. I'll leave links in the description. In the popularization of karate in Japan, and later the world, many myths started to pop up. I'll try and debunk some of them. Myth number one, karate was invented by farmers to defend against the samurai. This is not correct, and it is logical when you think about it. If you are a farmer, you don't work from 9 to 5, especially back in the old days. So Okinawan farmers would not have the time to invent and train an elaborate martial art like karate. Instead, karate was developed by members of the Okinawan aristocracy. It was probably used now and then to defend against Japanese samurai, with differing results, and not always unarmed. Which leads us to the next myth. Karate means empty hand, so is always unarmed. If you start a fight against well-trained sword-wielding samurai while unarmed, you will end up literally unarmed. In Okinawa there are quite a few weapons that have entire fighting systems around them. We know them by their Japanese names, like the bo, the sai, the tonfa, etc. When practicing fighting techniques with these weapons, you practice either the art that was built around the weapon, for instance bo jutsu, sai jutsu, etc and combined they are called Koburo. If you want to have the full karate experience, Koburo has to be part of it. Incidentally, when you translate Koburo, you get ancient martial arts, implying humans used weapons before they started using their fists and feet. Makes sense, right? Myth number three. Karate came from Okinawa, and before that it came from China. This is not really a myth, but rather it's incomplete. The Okinawan martial arts were highly influenced by China, but Okinawa was a commercial hub, welcoming sailors and travelers from everywhere. This made Okinawan Todi a melting pot of many different Asian and Southeast Asian martial arts. There are many other myths and stories that were either made up or embellished to make it cool for the Japanese to start learning karate. For instance, the heroic stories of Chatan Yara or Bushi Matsumura bear many resemblances with some of the stories from the life of other legendary Japanese swordsmen like Miyamoto Musashi. Usually when these stories end, there aren't any witnesses left alive, which is of course convenient for the hero of these stories. Karate has a very interesting history and diving into the facts and fiction surrounding it can lead to some intriguing stories. If you are at a loss trying to find the trees within this forest, might I suggest visiting Andreas Quas's website Ruku Buge, or just buying some of the books I'll link to in the description? There are many great sources to be found today, 
But just in case you don't know where to begin, just go for either Multiple Chalky's Karate My Art or Funakoshi Gichin's Karate Do My Way of Life. They're easy reading material and readily available for everyone. So of course you can't tell the story of karate without talking about some of the other masters like the man who founded my style of karate, Otsuka Hironori. So click right here to find out just exactly what he thought about Kara as he developed Wado Ryu. Let me wish you a wonderful day and as always, thanks for watching. Chuck Norris has counted to infinity twice.